Uh, Woody, as most of you know, was born in Okima, Oklahoma in 1912. And it was one of these early boom towns. It was a farm, ta farm town that became a boom town. And the reason I use this picture, first of all, is because the spirit and the energy in his artwork is just phenomenal. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Keith. What's his name? Thank you. I love this crowd. <laughs> uh, you know, with the little figures and everything. And I think that as we go along, too, you see a lot of hints of art to come and an art aesthetic to come, that he is kind of a little bit before the curve in a lot of this stuff. The other thing that's really interesting about this time is his style of writing, which also predates a lot of the beat poets of the 1950s and 60s that come after that, Ferlinghetti and Ginsberg, etc., with this whole idea of reconstructing language itself, which you hear in a lot of his songs. He makes up words, He's, he rambles with sentences, etc. But I want you to know that he got that from Rabelais, the French writer, Rabelais, who was known for using more adjectives per noun than any other writer on the planet. So here you have example, Woody had read Rabelais, and you have an example of his writing and describing Okima. Okima was one of the singingest, square dancingest, drinkingest, yellingest, preachingest, walkingest, talkingest, laughingest, cryingest, shootingest, fist fightingest, bleedingest, gamblingest, gun club and razor carryingest of our ranch towns and farm towns because it blossomed out into one of our first oil boom towns. So that's the influence on other writers and also you very, very clearly see the, inf the influence that Woody had on Dylan. It's kind of right there in that passage, this new way of constructing language.